says, I'm going to see a victory. Come on. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. The weapon may be formed. The weapon may be formed. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph And my God Will never fail Sing it I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory for the battle. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down, and I'm not backing down. For many giant, cause I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. We win, cause I'm gonna see a victory. Come on. For the battle, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Cause I'm gonna see a victory Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God I know you have been blessed I just know you have been blessed As Jeff teaches and preaches the Word of God Jeffrey works with us full time in this ministry, helping us carry out the work of the Lord God. Jeffrey is called to teach, preach the gospel. He is a prophet of the Lord in the making. Are you hearing me? Jeffrey knows the voice of God. He is prophetic, and we love Jeffrey with all of our hearts. Jeffrey and his lovely wife, Melanie. Melanie is from down there in the Bahamas. Jeffrey's from Little Rock, Arkansas. I've known Melanie much longer than Jeffrey, but we have known Jeffrey now for 25 years. That's a long time. And trust me, you know the Bible says, know them who labor among you. And there is nobody that I trust more to just sit and carry out the work of the ministry in our place and minister to God's people this entire week than Jeffrey because he understands this ministry. He understands the anointing on this ministry. Jeffrey was there with us through the good, the bad, the ugly, through thick and thin, through death, through, I mean, we went to hell and back together. Jeffrey is closely knitted. Jeffrey is like a real brother from another mother in my life. <laughs> Glory to God. So we love Jeff. We love Melanie. Great people of God. And Jeffrey's mother-in-law was a powerhouse for God. We used to call her Mother Bev. She was a prophetess of the Lord. And Melanie's dad, Mr. Bruce, he served right along with his wife in the church that they passed her in McLeanstown in McLeanstown, Grand Bahama. We know them. Melanie's mom and my mom were close friends. Melanie's dad and my dad were close friends. Those are real, genuine Christians who know the voice of God. And I tell you what, I'm so happy 
God hooked Jeff and Melanie together, and they are a tremendous blessing to me and Pastor Amy. And put your hands together and welcome to this live, welcome to this morning prayer broadcast, Jeffrey Zimmerman, one of my faithful disciples. Get ready to be blessed. Good morning and welcome to another morning prayer broadcast. As you can see, I am not Pastor Sean. I'm filling in for him this week. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Zimmerman, of course. Many of you already know me from the live broadcasts in the evening, from the times when I've called you uh, who have had a healing miracle on the broadcast, and also uh, from these morning prayer broadcasts, because this is my second week uh, doing these. So, so some of you have seen me a few times already. And uh, I tell you, we're having a great time just sharing the Word of God and, and, and talking to the people of God and... and uh, let me tell you, uh, being right here on this platform, uh, filling in for Pastor Sean, uh, as they say, they're big shoes to fill, you know, and I feel very honored and privileged to be here uh, in their stead. Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy are, some, are the most wonderful people that I have had the privilege of meeting. They are just the same off camera as on camera what you see is exactly what they are they don't pretend to be one thing and and there's something else they're real people they 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 uh are genuine they know how to cook i mean they really know how to cook you know and they are just just uh, amazing people i'm so privileged to know them so honored to be here and uh, my wife melanie and i are so grateful to be working with them in the ministry and uh, fulfilling the call of God on our lives. It's just a, a great blessing. Before we get started today, I'd like to pray with you. Uh, please join your faith with me as we pray. Uh, many of you have uh, varying needs, you know, and uh, we're going to join our faith with you today to believe God to perform a miracle in your lives today on this broadcast. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we join our faith with your wonderful people today. We ask, Lord, that you minister to them through me as I read the Word of God and teach it to your people. God, I pray that you'd give them strength, give them courage, encouragement, give them faith in their hearts to believe you for the impossible because what is impossible with man is possible with God and so we believe you today and we ask for great things to be done in the lives of the people today regardless of their walk of life regardless of where they are financially regardless of where they are in the world everybody needs Jesus and we ask Lord that you touch them where they live today in Jesus mighty name amen and amen so of course we're continuing in the series how to win when it looks impossible and our title today is your time for God's favor is here your time for God's favor is here see there's a time in your life when we have to do something to get our miracle whatever it is whatever God tells you to do you know the Bible says faith without works is dead being alone so there's a time for us to get up and move but then there are other times we've already done all we can do yes, there, we, there are times when there ain't nothing else we can do and God has to step in and favor us and uh, we're going to talk about that out of Luke chapter 1 today beginning with verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God. They were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless now that's very very important whatever God has told you to do in your life you need to do that thing you know 
You need to obey God's commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Matter of fact, he said, if you do not keep my commandments, you cannot be my disciple. You can't even be Jesus' disciple if you don't do what he says. You see? So, you know, I hear a lot of people call him Lord, but they act like he's a brother or something. You know, a Lord is someone you take orders from. A Lord is someone who can tell you, do this, and you do it. A Lord is someone who can say, I want you to get rid of this, and you get rid of that. Or I want you to get this, and you get that. See, the Lord is the one who calls the shots. You see? So it's very important that you walk in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Verse 7 says they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. Funny, this keeps coming up, doesn't it? This is what we talked about uh, on yesterday's program too. Someone was too old to have a child. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, that's uh, Zacharias, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto Zacharias an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. I guess so. I think I'd be, my knees would start knocking too if an angel of the Lord popped in out of nowhere and I'm standing there looking at him. You remember what Isaiah said, woe is me, I am undone. You know, <laughs> that would be me, you know, and that'd be some of you too, I believe. Amen. And when Zacchaeus saw him, he was troubled, fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. Amen. So Zacharias and Elizabeth were going to be blessed with a son. You see, in Psalm 102, verse 13, it said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. See, there's a set time for God to favor you and answer your prayer. See, we all think that when we ask, we should get it right away. And sometimes God does it that way. But more often than not, he wants us to keep coming to him. He wants us to keep asking. He's got a set time for these things to happen. I can't tell you how many years we prayed for certain things to start happening in this ministry. And we're just now, after 25 years of waiting, seeing some of the things that God spoke to us way back in the day. You understand? So it's all in God's timing, you see. As Pastor Sean's mom used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he'll always be on time. Luke 1, 24. We're going to skip ahead now. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days where he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. So see, what God promised to Elizabeth happened. And she uh, became pregnant with John, John the Baptist. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. You see, for Zacharias and Elizabeth and for Mary, this was a season of favor. You see that? He came upon, he came to Zacharias and Elizabeth first, and then after six months, he's appearing now to Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. What's going on here? What, what, what's going on? And the angel said unto her, fear, her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Yes. And behold, 
Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. Now, I'm sure many of you listened to pastor's morning prayer broadcast during Holy Week, you know, and I was blessed listening to those, and I'll tell you why, because more than once, Pastor Sean pointed out that people like Isaiah and David all spoke about Jesus Christ, very specific, I mean detailed things, hundreds of years before Jesus even came on the scene. See, back when I was a lot younger in my faith, I was afraid of the devil, you know. I knew he couldn't read my thoughts, but I didn't even want to talk because I felt like if I said something, then the devil would be able to attack me on it, you see. So if I didn't say anything, I was safe. But see, God is bad. God is bad. God puts exactly what he's going to do in the word printed out there for everybody to see the devil can go read it if he wants to and he can't do one thing about it as a matter of fact when he tries all he winds up doing is making the thing happen exactly the way god said it would happen i think some people are too afraid of the devil you know i dare you to say I've got more power than the devil. Amen. Because you're speaking the words of Christ, you see. You're not speaking your own words. When you speak the words of God, you are speaking the words of life to your situation. So this virgin birth was foretold long time. Thousands of years before. And now... It's happening. Verse 34, Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That's a good question. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You see, John the Baptist had to be born in order to prepare the way for Jesus to come on the scene. And it was written, here again, it was written in the prophets thousands of years before. And here it is happening just as God said it would. So if you're believing God for something, if God has said something to you, had made you a promise, I'm here to tell you your time for God's favor is here. But there may be some listening who don't know Jesus. There may be some listening who don't know God as their Savior. And for you, today is the day of of salvation if today you hear his voice harden not your heart if you feel like you want to give your heart to Jesus right now then just pray with me say just repeat after me say Lord Jesus I believe that you are the son of God that you came to earth in the form of a man to die on the cross for my sins and that you rose again on the third day and that you are seated at the right hand of God praying for me so that I might enter into heaven. And so today I ask you to come into my heart as my Lord and Savior, I turn my back to the world, the flesh, and the devil. 
And from now on, I am your child. I will do things your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so if you prayed that prayer right now and meant it with all your heart, you are a child of God. And we want to congratulate you and welcome you into the family of God. Go ahead and, and type below this, uh, uh, below this message. I have received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And let us know what great things God has done for you. Amen. Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and the link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Remember to share this video with at least five of your friends. Share it through WhatsApp, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Messenger. Text the link to somebody. Share it through YouTube. Share it with all of your friends. Help us get this gospel around the world. Share it, share it, share it. Never forget me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy. We love you. We appreciate you. We will never take you for granted. We look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow as we continue this series, How to Win When It Looks Impossible. God bless you. Bye-bye.